Shalom Talmudim. We are in the second video lecture. Hope you've been enjoying Hebrew. Keep working on that vocab. We are just going to pick up uh, and do the vocab for the add-ons that are right here. Uh, I promised we'd do that. Uh, we'll just go over the vocab and do a couple practice sentences for how this is supposed to work. And then the good news is that this next class is nothing new, it's just going to be review of everything that we've been doing. So it'll just really try to solidify it in our minds. So hopefully that'll work out well. So as we go through here, I'm gonna zoom it up on the screen here a little bit. Uh, the first word on the new list, the add-on list that is outside, some of these words you've already had, but this first word here, if you read it, remember you're going right to left, top to bottom. So you have the sh sound with the sheen there and then the comates here is a a class so that's sha sha and then lamed is l so sha l and then whenever you have the dot above um, if it's by itself it's an o class if it's with the vav it's still an o class they make the same sound you don't pronounce the vav in this instance it's always this is called a holom vav, so you pronounce the whole thing as a o. So shalom, and this is a final mem. So shalom, <clears throat> shalom, with the accent being more on the end. So shalom, shalom, and shalom is the word for peace in biblical Hebrew. And like I mentioned, it's also the word for hello. So you greet everyone with shalom, peace be to you, and whatever. Uh, and that's how it goes. Second word on the list here is right to left, top to bottom. You have with the lamed, and then the only vowel, vowel here is the holum, the defective holum in the second slot there. So the aleph is silent, so it's pronounced low, low. And that's the word for no in Hebrew. Lo, it can come before verbs, and you'd translate it as not, he will not walk, or it can stand alone just being a no. So if somebody says something in class that is incorrect, you could just say, lo, lo, that's not, that's not correct, no. Um, the alternative, which somebody asked last time uh, as well, what's, what's yes? Well, it's this word, ken, ken, this is a final noon. So ken is the word, and that means Yes, it can also mean truly, and there's also the, a word that's spelled identical to it, which means thus or so as an adverb. So, you know, we'll talk more about the second usage later, but can is how you'd say yes. And then uh, I figured it would also be useful to introduce how to say here or there in Hebrew. So this is the word for here in biblical Hebrew. Uh, with the dagesh in the pe, it makes a hard p sound, a p, and then the defective holum he it makes a o sound. So po is the word for here, po. I guess, uh, isn't that the name of a Star Wars character, po? So you can just associate it with him. Po should have been here. Po should have been here and we would we would have been fine. Um, and then the next word, as the opposite of here, would be, again, the SH sound, and then the A class, so sham, sham, sham is the word for there, sham, there. Uh, and then I have a couple words which you know, but just how to spell them. So this is how you spell more, more which is teacher. More is teacher here. And then this is how you spell Talmudim. Talmidim, Talmidim. Right here, that's the plural, students. The im marks the plural. And then Talmid is how you would say just one student. Student. Talmid is a student. Talmidim is students. All right, and then so those those vocabulary words are, are handy to know. Um, I think you know most of those, the yes, there, and here, sham, po, ken, those are all good. So 
this selection of words right here is requires a little more explanation and this will be our first introduction to how verbs work and we're it's not going to be too complicated um, but it, it'll make sense I think um, as we practice it um, it'll be helpful so typically I'm gonna get rid of that now um, when you have a verb and it's used in the participle form. The participle form in Greek, don't worry if you don't know what a participle is, um, we'll explain all that later, but I'm just, for sake of clarity, the participle form is what they call the most unmarked form. In other words, it's the most basic uh, as far as nothing too much extra that goes on it. So the default form for a participle is this first column here, these two words. So you would pronounce both of these, whoops, sorry. <clears throat> the first one here is yo shave, yo shave, yo shave. And that's the word to sit, to sit. So yo shave um, would be, if I said ani yo shave, that means I'm sitting or I'm staying somewhere. Um, yo, ani yo shave. Babait. I am sitting or staying in the house. Um, it can mean staying as well as sitting. Um, that's typically you. Ha whenever you have a participle, you'll typically have the o a sound. So notice on the second one here, um, the holake. Holake is the idea of walking or going somewhere. So if I said Ani yo shave, the first one, A, that's I'm staying somewhere, or I'm sitting somewhere. If I say ani holek, that means I'm going somewhere. So that's typically, these are very common words in Hebrew for staying, for um, dwelling somewhere, and then for, uh, for walking somewhere or going somewhere. So ani holek. Now, the complication is that if you... Uh, wanted to say a, for, for example, if you were going to say Abraham was going somewhere, you would say Avraham Holek, Avraham Holek. So you just use the regular default form because this is the masculine singular form. But if you wanted to say uh, Rivka or Tamar, if you wanted to say Rebecca or Tamar are going somewhere, you would actually use the second form. So the second column is what they call the feminine singular form. So uh, also I should say that if you were um, if you were referring to um, you as a as a female, if you were going to say at instead of ata, ata would be masculine. At as a pronoun would be feminine. So if you were going to say at yo shevet, then that would be you as a female are sitting and you would use this secondary female form. Now, I will say too that notice the spelling here, I, it's interchangeable. So this holom vav makes a O sound and on the first one, this defective holom makes a O sound. They can be spelled interchangeably. Um, so I put it like that so that you understand it can be spelled either way. The important thing is the sound um, O evet or O A. You have the O right away at the beginning of the word, which is telling you, oh, this is a participle. That's what's going on. <clears throat> Let's see, go get rid of all that stuff. Okay, um, so that's what's going on here. And then the, the last column here is what they call the masculine plural. So you'll notice that this is Ho, ho, lakim, or yo, shavim, and you hear the im endings, and that communicates the plural idea. So, for example, if you were going to say um, a whole bunch of men were going to walk or go somewhere, you would say anashim, ho, lakim, anashim, ho, lakim. So, we're really going to try to utilize these two sentences. Um, at, to describe things, um, halak um, in the participle form, holek, um, ani holek, uh, babait, I am going in the house, or something like that. I'm walking in the house. Okay, so with that in mind, um, let's actually 
um, read a couple practice sentences here. So on the right column here, I have some practice sentences. So as we read through this, the first one on the top of the screen here, uh, you have reading right to left again. So you have av. Now you don't you don't pronounce this shiva because it's following a short a short uh, patak. So it's av. And then you have raham. And yes, you have put together that this um, avraham is related to the word av, which is father. And then Raham is the idea of multitude, so father of multitude or father of many. Avraham, that's what his name means. Avraham Holek Holek Babait. Babait. So Avraham Holek Babait. Avraham Holek Babait. What is it saying? It's saying Abraham is going or is walking babait in the house, babait. Remember the bait preposition here, you just stick on the beginning of a word and it means in or sometimes by but uh, or with, but usually in. <clears throat> now, if that's Avraham and that he's a man, so it would be the masculine form. But what if you have the feminine form like Tamar so Tamar, Tamar, Holacha, Holacha. In this instance, uh, it is a feminine form because it's Tamar. So Tamar being a feminine, Tamar, Holacha. It's not Holake anymore because it's feminine. So it's Holacha, Holacha, Holek, Holacha. And then the same, uh, um, same spelling. I uh, have a patak under one and a comates under one. Those are interchangeable for the article. So it's going to be spelled either way at times, but it's pronounced the same way. So babait, babait. So Avraham holek babait, masculine form. Abraham is walking in the house. And Tamar holaka babait. Tamar is walking in the house. Now, if we wanted to use a plural form, the im ending. So, anachnu, anachnu, that's we, anachnu yo shavim, anachnu yo shavim, we are sitting, we are sitting, or we sit, and then if you have another phrase there, uh, it could be in the house, babait, or uh, baretz, eats the uh, in in a tree or in trees. <laughs> uh, you could have something like that, or basere in the field, basere in the field. <clears throat> anachnu yo shavim. So remember, if you have a plural, or if it was atem here, atem, same thing, atem yo shavim. Atem Yoshavim. All right, so moving on, uh, we have Anashim. Anashim, the word for men or people generically. So Anashim Holachim. Holachim, men are going Baderek. Baderek. Ba Derek, in the way or in the path. So men are walking in or on the path. You could translate it that way. Um, and then the last sentence, I wanted to show you how eshet is used. So isha turns into eshet when it's, when it's in construct. And in construct means that you just, uh, it's connected to the next word and you put of in between. So instead of saying isha avraham, you say eshet avraham, eshet avraham, meaning the wife of Abraham. So Eshet Avraham Yoshevet Babait. So because it's feminine, you have to use the feminine form, which is Yoshevet. The accent is actually on the second syllable for this word, Yoshevet. So Eshet Avraham Yoshevet Babait. 
So the wife of Abraham is sitting or staying in the house. Eshet Avraham Yoshevet Babait. So the big takeaway here, uh, if we go back to this Word document, is that typically when you have a default participle, you're just going to have whatever the letters are with a O class between the first and second and a A class between the second and third. So, Shomer, Holek, Yoshev, Omer, like pretty much anything's going to follow this pattern with the OA pattern. And then for the feminine form, it's going to rotate between a Comets He and a Segol Tav at the end. And you might say, well, how do I know which one it is? You just have to learn. You just have to learn each word and use it, get used to it. So that's why we're going to introduce the words that way and uh, be able to work that out. And then if it's ever in the, in the plural masculine form, you're going to have im at the end like that. Uh, there is a feminine plural form, ot, and we'll talk about that later. But it's very uncommon because you don't usually see uh, groups of women addressed in scripture. I mean, it does happen, but it's uncommon. So we'll actually talk about it a little bit later, uh, just so that we can get some practice with the im first of all. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of help about how to uh, translate some of the sentences. One other thing that I should note um, with the practice here. So the general rule, you've probably picked it up in the Aleph with Beth videos, but when you are, when you are making a to be sentence, so if you're saying, um, I am Beth. If you wanted to say that, she just says, Ani Beth, because you don't need the to be verbs in Hebrew. So she just says, Ani Beth. Ani Beth. Or in our pronunciation, it would be Ani Bet. Ani Bet. So, Anibet, Anibeth, that's how she would say it. There's no to be verb. Now, same thing applies when describing objects as well. If you wanted to say um, the, the, let's say you wanted to say the horse is great. Well, you would say <clears throat> Hasus, Hasus Gadol. Uh, gadol. Hasus Gadol. That's how you would say the horse is, is great. And the way, or big, and the way that you differentiate is because you put the article on the front of the noun, and then the adjective does not have the article. But if you wanted to say the great horse is, or the big horse is, you know, is fast or something, you would have to say Hasus ha gadol. Hasus ha gadol. Um, uh, kalul or something, whatever, if you wanted to say fast. So that's typically how you're going to differentiate and, and um, translate those. And that comes up in one of the translation sentences for uh, this week. So hopefully that helps. Okay, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, keep up the good work.